Welcome Levy Strikes, home of the Oak Farms Premier League. Um, last week we saw some exciting things happen. We saw John Fisher throw the front 10 for the 288 game. We also saw a new high average leader in the clubhouse. Um, and a lot of other uh, exciting things happen in our league. Well, it was a great week for John Fister, obviously going around David Stouffer, which he said was one of his goals. He wanted to go around him, and he did. He's two pins ahead of him now on average. Fister shooting a big game. Obviously, I didn't pick any any bowler to beat uh, Mike Alshire, and there's John Fister. So, a really, really a, a fantastic bowler, fun to watch, extremely accurate. Accuracy and speed control is his game. He is not a power player. He's a stroker. And it's nice to see a stroker beating all the big guns and all the high rim rates. Yeah, the top three averages are all righties. And the lefties bowled great last week, you know, with Bobby Taylor with 751 and Ricky Ward with 780. So the bottom line is uh, Beagle, Dennis Beagle, really struggled on, a, on the uh, TV pair, which surprised me because he had 780 on that pair earlier in the year. But there are some pairs in this house that, that, that are tricky. The lefties bowled well last week, the righties bowled well. We had very good scores, and of course, Brightview Financial still in first place, about yeah. 16 points ahead. Absolutely. We saw uh, another team move up the uh, leaderboard. We'll, we'll get to that soon. All right, we'll go right into match one. Match one is going to be the uh, uh, Team 15 Beach Bowl. Only got seven points. They dropped the spot to fourth. Uh, they pulled Team Number Three Autism Awareness, Gasiris Team, who uh, jumped up to uh, not first. I don't know. That's a mistake. So I was there somewhere. <laughs> they moved up a spot. Well, they won 17 points. Uh, interestingly enough, Donnie Schwartz going three and one with a 563. Uh, bowling Jason Radno, who uh, was a sub. Uh, Tim Sipper came in, sub, went two and two, shot 656. Pretty good bowling. Mark Pulaski really hurting last week, had a shoulder problem and a neck problem. The team really struggled. Charlie Tryon, which is 530. Of course, James Oswald was gone. Beach Bowl took a hit. That's probably the lowest they've been in five or six weeks. Uh, obviously, autism awareness. Daniel Cacera struggling, really. I watched him last yeah. week. You know, he got in two pin, he got out through the nose. Got in two pin. Finally, the last game, he really tried to open the lane up, slow down, and go around everything That's and shot 225. Cool. That's interesting. He might have to play the lanes that way. Donnie Schwartz Sr. going 3 and 1 with a 563 series. That's a break there. So yeah. they did take 17, uh, but they're certainly not in first place. No, they're not. Um, the, the best match of, of those was uh, Tim Sipper getting by Billy Seymour by three pins, 692 to 689 for a split. Tim Sipper's a good bowler. I like how I Yeah, yeah, he's, he's, he's good. And I had him in junior leagues over on the Cape. Very nice young man. Still throws it very well. It's the first time I've seen him bowl in a long time. Billy Seymour, very good bowler. 244 in the last game to keep him in the hut. But if you'll notice, they took three games, 9-10, 899, very close. 878.45, very close. 925, they sort of ran away the last game. And a low total of 2705, taking everything. Yeah. And that's something we don't see a lot in the league. 2705, never sweeps them like that. Especially on lane 25 and 6. Oh, yes. Yeah. They got a break. They really did. Wow. All right, uh, match two, nobody saw this coming. Um, this is uh, team number 13, uh, Rolling Thunder, it took 20. They're in 23rd place, and they beat up on Naples Fire Protection. They only got four points and dropped to 11. Well, they, uh, Rolling Thunders, last two weeks, they took 16 and 20. They took 36 out of 48. They're batting 750. John Toten with 585 was really carrying the team and bowling very well for a high handicap player. Corey Brown, 573, very good. Ron Rosser, 508 with a 135, but he takes three, which is great for Ron and his wife. They're yeah. wonderful people. And Herbie time. the Hat, 590 scratch, 743 with handicap. They rolled a 2907, a 23rd place team, beating Naples Fire Protection, and Dennis Beagle really struggling, did not bowl well. Andy Cox really having a bad night. John Cavins, Cavancino didn't bowl too bad with 589, and Ron Richter with 605. 23.94 without Billy Morgan, they need to step it up. Also, uh, that that match, uh, game two, uh, Naples Fire Protection all opened in the 10th. They, they all got... opened in the 10th to lose by two pins. Yeah. And Dennis Beagle, you know, entering the night right around 229, shooting 611. So 70 pins under his average for him. I'm sure it was a long ride home. He's a fantastic bowler, really struggling the last couple of weeks. But I think when Billy comes back tonight, or Wednesday night, excuse me, uh, that should pump him up a little bit. And, that's a good team. I picked that team to be in the top five. 
bookies in Vegas lost a lot of money on this match. Yeah, the bookies in the Vegas uh, took Naples Fire Protection. So they investigated. They got in trouble. Okay, uh, match number three is going to be uh, Tenor 11. Uh, took 17. They moved up to 18th against uh, Big Bowling, Big B Bowling Tournaments. We took seven, dropped to 16th. They're really losing a lot of ground lately. Well, look at Robert Hilton shot 752 and won one point. When have we seen that in the league? Maybe Scott McDonald against Jacques Yeah, that was crazy. Uh, 752, Mike Smith, all of a sudden Mike Smith My comes fire. alive. Really struggled seven, eight weeks, shoots 705. Craig Streets will finally having a good night. There it is with a lot of handicap, 188, 615, taking the sweeper. Joe Smith with the sweeper, bowling very well, 663. That's a good team right now. If they could click a little more like this two, three weeks in a row, they can make a move. Absolutely. Um, also, the... Uh a little tough on Mike Smith uh, beat Robert Robert Hilton, 786 to 785. Unbelievable. Wayne Toplin with 683, 743 total. Brandon Carlton struggling for the sw uh, got swept, and Jason uh, Land uh, got swept also. Actually didn't bowl too bad, 570, 666 total. But Craig Streetsel, uh, who's been barely breaking 500, shot 615, and that's the difference. I think it's highest series of the year so far. Yeah. All right, Two uh, sweeps on that team. Three brooms all together, I think. All right, all right uh, match number four is going to be uh, team number nine, Taps 115, and they beat Hockey Baby uh, 15 to 9, and Hockey Baby dropped to six, and Taps moved up to 20th. Unbelievable. Danny Heim, who struggled all year, finally bowled. Well, Danny Heim throws the ball really good, but he's got older equipment, hadn't bowled in five years, and just got caught up in a, in a lot of things he couldn't figure out early in the season. I know he bought a couple of balls all of a sudden. There's 639, 771 with handicap. And Bobby Taylor, the veteran. Both Danny and Bobby are USBC directors from Southwest Florida. How about Bobby Taylor averaging 217, 751 with the sweep over Scott Cooper, who is really a good bowler. Super and Bobby sweet. Taylor hammering Scott Cooper, who shot 811 earlier in the year with 300. And uh, I think Scott got a little surprised. Uh, not knowing how good Bobby Taylor is. Bobby Taylor can bowl. Good so, bowler. Very good bowler. Hey, don't look at me as striking. Nice seeing Chris Ubeck get a sweep there. Chris Ubeck with 279 with sweep. But they only took nine because they had two oh and four. Scott Cooper and Anthony Avancher. Yeah, game two, uh, um, hockey baby pulled out game two. Uh, was a 970 nine and 964. Really? That's they would have been in a lot of trouble losing that. They lost everything else. They lost total. And, and two out of three team games. But it's a long year. They are a good team. They're in sixth place. They're going to be a, pe a factor all the way through the season. Good chemistry on that yeah, team. Like that team, really that team bowls very well together. Yes, they do. And they picked a good sub with Scott Cooper, but unfortunately, not that night. Not that night. 8 11, 7 50, and then yeah, yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. Just say some little strikes. All right, match number five is going to be a team number four EBA Pro Shop. They took 10. They're in seventh place. They didn't move, and they bowled against Chris P's team. Team number 24, Eddie Foods, got 14, and they stayed in second place. Well, that's funny. EBA Pro Shop's got Robert Eddie on it. And the other side, he's bowling the team he sponsors who beat him, Eddie Foods. He sponsored both teams. That's right. And Greg Lindsay, there he is. I kind of felt Greg Lindsay would get it going. And if you'll notice, 704, but he only goes 1 and 3. That's two 700s that went 1 and 3. I wouldn't have bet on that. That's a great score, uh, unfortunately, if you're up against the wrong bowler. In case of Lindsay, up against Robert Eddie. Robert Eddy gave him 683 and uh, went 3-1. Robert's best seed, uh, set of the season. John Rakowski, 660 every week. Every week, no matter what. Uh, every week, no matter what, did go 3-1. Chris Pondestransky, who usually bowls 700 every other week, finally went 599 on his 700 week. So. Gave John a break. Yeah. And Candelaro bowling well, going 3-1. Had a bad week earlier in the season with them. Joe Ponzio, 610, 3-1. Joe P uh, throws the ball really good. Eddie Foods, 22nd place. They got a long way to go. Uh, climbing. Also, the uh, the uh, Robert Eddie versus Greg Lindsay match, 782 to 779. Wow. <laughs> Unbelievable. Three pens. <laughs> Greg heads our junior program here. I'm really happy Greg bowled well, but he's probably not happy that he went one and three. Shoot 700 and got, got, got beat by the boss. The boss beat him. Boss won really. Like the boss got him. Kid bowled good on Monday, though. Kid bowled better on Monday. All right, uh, match number six is going to be uh, team number two, Frank and Beans, 116. Uh, they're in second place, and they beat Tick Transport, the hottest team in the league. We only got eight, and they stayed in eighth place. Well, interesting. Mike Durkin, 
really having a good year, 215 after not bowling for five years with a sweep. John Van Baron came in, come in and uh, sub for Chucky, give him a 643 with a three and one. And uh, Reggie Khan actually bowled very well, 703 again, winning one point. That's three 700s that, that can't win. Amazing. 90% of 235, I've been saying it all year. You can bowl 700, you bowl the wrong guy, you're in trouble. Oh um, yeah, Reggie Khan, 703, 757 versus Mark. Mark got 276 the first game. 757 going one and three. It goes up against 785. Who knew? I mean, that's that's unbelievable. If you'll notice the score, 2813. There's the 2800 number. 2794, right behind him. Obviously, that's a, a one-frame game. You know, with six and three on a double, there it is. One shot cost him team total. Also, uh, John Ben Marin um, got by uh, Tony Kramer. From Rorsak, 703 to 702. Wow! Unbelievable. One pin. Every pin Unbelievable. Counts. The Baron. That's right, John and Baron. All right, uh, match number seven is going to be uh, the kids, number eight, Diamond Security. They only got eight, they dropped to 19. Yeah, they're on a big slump all of a sudden. They, they were up there for a while, all of a sudden now they're going backwards every week. They're taking eight, nine, 10 points. They're getting pretty tomatoes, good. And Killer Tomatoes, Larry Lippman with another 600. He keeps apologizing to me for the, the way he bowled on our feature pair about a month ago, he shot 430. Since then he's had 634 and 660 in the league. So evidently a little spanking it took woke him up. Sometimes you get beaten, you know what? You say, I'm gonna figure this out. I don't want it to happen again. I think the next time we see him on our future pairs, will bowl very well. He loves the ball. He went three and one, and of course Bobby Martin, Bob Apollone, three and one, three and one, three and one, sixteen points. That's a nice. But they're in twenty-first. They got a long way to go. Yeah, the uh, team number eight, Diamond Security, they're dropping. They dropped down to nineteenth. Man, the kids are losing every week. That's a good team. When you look at their averages, they're four forty. They're eight forty-five, but they they can't beat anybody. Keep getting beat every week. It's like child abuse. Sure. Beating the kids. You gotta be careful out there. My lord. All right, match number eight. Well, they didn't have uh, the, the super lefties this week. They, uh, they had to work. No Rizzo. Yeah, Rizzo no was Schmatter. gone. Look at Darren Lamar with the sweep. I love it. Darren uh, is such a nice man. So okay. happy for Darren to get the sweep over. David Valencia, which I would never have bet that David would bowl 500 and go on four. This is a very good bowler that has joined that team, taking the place of Ray Stewart, uh, Ray Stevens, who has a bad knee. But David got lost, just a, one of those three game sets you want to try and forget in your life, we've all had them. But this is a man that can shoot 750 at any time and I expect him to bowl very well with this team. They're our 15th place. Barry Seitz having a good night. Gary Seitz going three and one, but uh, they're dropping slowly. They're down to 15th. They've got to have a couple good weeks. They're a top five team. Not too yes, long. they were. They were a top five team. Yeah, that's a Justin Allridge uh, versus Barry Sites match, 758 to 784. Wow. That's a tough one. Barry Sites is a good bowler. You know? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, he had bowled five or six years. He doesn't practice. And imagine if, you know, he started taking serious bowl 20, 30 games a week and really came in here and got loose. Sometimes you get out of work, you bowl three games, and you don't bowl for 160 hours. Then you bowl three games, and you don't bowl for 160 hours. Very tough to work five, six days a week, come in and only bowl three games a week. It's not easy. Those are great. All right. Gary Seitz bowl solid as usual, you know, in a 209, 194, 212. And Dwayne Billy shot 718 to John, 708 to 3 and 1. Wow. Dwayne Billy's bowled very well the last month. He's had some 3 and 1, some 4 and 0s. Oh. Hey, Good absolutely. for Dwayne. Nice to see that. Yep. Team's moving up. It's up to 14. Yep. All right. Match number 9 is going to be the uh, team number 16 took 10. And their ninth place, they stay the same, and they uh, and stupid, tor stupid corner got 14, and they're still in last. Well, Josh Brown and Rob Thorwood really took seven of the ten points. Uh, Dennis Rieger and J.J. Feather struggling. J.J. Feather with 259 in game two, but it wasn't enough to win totally at 27-10. Again, a low number. 27-48 with a team win. That's a blessing. But they're in 24th place, stupid corner, with uh, Richard White Leather and Scott White Leather. Uh, Scott bowled pretty good, 633. Mike Boyd bowled very well, 688, went 3-1. That team's struggling. Uh, what do you say to a team, 24th, wait for week 19 when it starts over? Yeah. And maybe yeah. They, they change their lineup or they do something different. Maybe they get someone else on the roster. But obviously, they've been getting beat up pretty good. They're not that bad a team, but evidently. Uh, They're a top 10 team on their way down there. 
Yeah, yeah. Also, yeah. Rob Thor got by Scott Whiteletter, 751 to 723. Uh, Mike yeah. Boyd got by JJ Feather, yeah. 749 to 750. Rob Thor has bowled good the last two weeks. Shot 1360 his last six, 702, 658. Nice bowling for Big Rob with the beard. That's Rob the beard Thor. All right, Scott, you know, Scott Weather, Scott Whiteleather's daughter, Cindy, uh, she tied for fifth for the high school state in yeah. Orlando. Yeah, that, that, that's a family there behind their children Absolutely. for bowling. It's wonderful it's to awesome. watch. Great to see that. Uh, I love watching that chemistry, you know, with some of the fathers and mothers and the, and the kids here on Saturdays. It's fantastic. The fourth over is the White Leathers. And, of course, uh, uh, Chuck Rucker with his son. Uh, it's just fun to watch. He Parents did. are really involved here. Jake, Joe Gateway was down there. Yeah, um, yeah. Oswald was down there. Yeah, James Oswald with Andrea. Great to see. Uh, all these, all these yeah, players. I love it. I love the family. The families and the kids here are wonderful to watch. And they are serious. It's just great. Great to watch. All right. She bowls for Riverdale Raiders. Here we go. All right, match number 10. Now the Dream Team, number 14, Big Jam Alert, only got 10. They stayed the same in 13th. They both OMWB who got 14th, and they moved up to 10th. Well, Ricky Ward with 681 in the sweep. Mike Alshare 719, but again going two and two, not taking a lot of points. Lee Ratchin really struggling, probably his worst week of the year with 564. Dave Stouffer 646. If anybody would tell me that Ratchin and Stouffer would right. go 0 for 8. Uh, and this deep into the season, I'd say, I, I don't think I could take that bet. I don't, I don't believe I could even bet against them with a lot of odds, and they're too good. But all of a sudden, Brian Copeland and Matt Hodgman, 666, 721 scratch. They bowl 1520 with handicap, 1520 with handicap for, for uh, uh, six games. That's a lot of six. 29 14, that's a big number. Finally, uh, Big Jam bowling pretty good, 28 51. It couldn't win team total. So, you know, Ricky 781, he shot 781, he's up to 222. Yeah, he's slowly coming now. That Scott Cobb bet ain't looking too good for Scott Cobb. I think Ricky does. Uh, you know, Ricky uh, getting out of the shoot, you know, he was the first year, oh, well. uh, and the, the training was slipping a little. All of a sudden, he got it in the second, he's got a little traction, and uh, just uh, too good, too good to get beat. Got to figure it out. Too good to get beat. Alshire lost game one, 252 to 251. Wow. And game three, uh, I thought he'd shoot 300. He had like a front seven, front eight. Yeah, it's good. Is that back to back sevens for him? Did he go no, 735, 719? No, last week he didn't. No, he didn't. Okay. No, he's, he's I was wondering. Eight. Nope, and Hodgman now goes to We keep waiting for the All Shire explosion, which I know we're going to see. Oh, There's going to be a couple 780s back to back weeks because this guy's too good. Obviously, he's got fooled some weeks, but he didn't get fooled last week. You know, if you look at his games, 206, probably an open in between strikes, could have been 240. You know, the 270, you know, he's looking, he's one ball away from 750. Absolutely. And then, you know, when Ricky goes 780 and then Alshon goes 719, I mean, yep. they're, they're not firing. And they only and they only get 10 points. You know, See, th this is what the problem's been all year. Two of the four have bowled well every week. Can't put it together. And they can't, they can't get enough to get it going. But they are explosive. They're in 13th. They're certainly not out of it. But, uh, you know, next, uh, this coming Wednesday's week 12, we're a third of the way through the season, and right now they don't look like a factor with, with uh, 12 weeks in. Six weeks left for the half. Yeah, six weeks left for the half. It's nice seeing Matt Hodgman shooting on 720. The second game, he shot 257. And the third game, he yeah. shot 758. 276, 277 with handicap. Gets the sweep, 778 against Dave Stolfer, who I'm sure left here uh, yeah. not too happy. All right, match number 11 is going to be the. Uh, this is the rematch of uh, the, the position round. This is where, how I thought the rematch was going to go. This is what I expected, not the 23 to 1 by Bright. Yeah, here. and Chris Rich again having a bad night, uh, going 0 and 8 against this team against Fister. Yeah. Uh, Fister is just on a roll right now, bringing his average to 235, another 700, 280 in the middle. They go 26 72, and they lose total with 28 46. They lose 21 pins to total. Right there, so that's a one ball match there. Somebody opened in the wrong spot. Bobby Hammerton a week before, uh, bowling very well against All Shire, 605. Kevin Day beats him and gets the sweep against Hammerton, which I, I didn't think could happen. This is a very good team. Tyler Floyd with the 258 start. So Hammerton and Floyd go one and seven. And then, uh, uh, or excuse me, Chikoski and uh, Hammerton go one and seven, and Floyd and Fister go. Seven and a half and a half. How about that? That's the first week we've seen them do that, Jim. Yeah. Um, yeah. That was the uh, position round match when uh, 
<laughs> one, three, three, and one. one, three, and one. Oh, Lightning yeah. Strike, so. Lightning Strike's got a little revenge there. Basically, a Jared Eisenberg bowling good. Yeah. Lefties look like they bowled well last week. A lot of 700s for lefties. Bobby Taylor, Ricky Ward, Jared Eisenberg, and uh, 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 Ice uh, Martinez like all had 700s. So, uh, looks uh, like the left side was very playable. Yeah, Jared uh, Eisenberg versus Zhukovsky, lefty versus lefty. Yep, Zhukovsky 668, 1 and 3. Zhukovsky bowling very well at 219, Hamilton 216, Florida 206, Fister 235 leading the league. And Fister and Zhukovsky both in the top three in the league with points, uh, point totals. Uh, tough to beat, yeah. Tough to nice seeing Kevin Day shooting 675. Yep, Kevin Day, good for him. Absolutely. That's my team lightning strike. They have brand new shirts. They look, they look spectacular. I love the lightning strike shirts. I want one. I'll get you one. Yes. We'll see on the back. It'll be called baldness strikes. So, all right, match 12. Uh, this is the Goats made a big move. Uh, team one, Bill, team one took six. They dropped to 12th. And the Goats took 18, moved up to third. And place. Clay McCallum, good for him. Now, he's the handicap bowler on the team. And look, he got a sweep with 508. So there you go. If he can shoot between 500 and 550, he can sweep every night because he's got so much wood. A house Brown struggling still, one and th 0 and 4 for the house, just in, or 1 and th 3 just didn't bowl well. Ice Martinez with the sweep, 7 0 8. And he's thumbless and he throws a train and throws plastic right up the dry. He rips the cover off the ball. Well, he has ice on Monday in our league and he shot 750. He shot 750. He said 50 on Monday and 708 yeah. on Wednesday. He, he dugs it to 7, it just flat lays. He gets it to 4, it gets back. That plastic ball can't jump the nose, even if he gets to the drive, it doesn't have any flare. Exactly. He rips the cover. He's got four, 450 off his hand with that. How many guys can throw plastic and shoot 700 here? It ain't that easy. I can't make it 450 off my hand with plastic. Yeah. <laughs> That's a lot of reps. <laughs> Uh, yeah, um, I, I guess the ghost listen to you. They, they had a lineup change. If they put in first, they put up a lot lineup change. So you know, you like, have to. It, it's a chemistry issue. And I never say that to knock a team. I say that to change it to change chemistry. Anytime you get a team that's struggling with your anchor man, especially, is trying to carry the team over them, put them against the lesser voter. Let them go 4 0. Let them go 4 0. Let somebody else take the beating on the bottom that might, that might be taking a beating on top, anyways. So anytime you're trying to juggle, steal three or four points with a lineup change, instead of going eight and 16, it could be a 12 and 12. That's a lot. Yes. The four points is a lot. The lineup change could give you that. And I firmly believe it. Yes. I'm watching the teams keeping the identical lineups and getting beat. And I, my advice to them is trick it around. Try some new chemistry. Absolutely. Let's go. What happened was uh, Clay moved to third uh, from lead opposition. How yep. moved to second. Yep. And then um, Ice moved to third, and uh, Jay stayed. Yeah, I love it. Yep. I love it. And they put in first, though. So and and Jay, Jay goes one and three with a pretty good set. 697, but Joe Scudato is obviously a very, very good bowler. 215 and up. But, you know, Joe's can beat anybody in the house. That does great. Yeah, I mean, he, gets, he gets loose. He, there's no fear in Joe's. Blake Barnard going 0 and 4. That's really a pretty good bowler. He hadn't bowled much in five years. And, you know, bringing up a family, you know, a professional career. So he struggled. He's very erratic right now. That's a pretty good bowler. Uh, you know, I, I bet if he practiced a little bit and got loose, this wouldn't happen to him. But some guys just can't get out of the house. That's a solid team. They got a couple of kids in there. They're working mm -hmm. 50, 60 hours a week. Yeah, it's awesome. tough to bowl. Very yeah. tough to bowl. We got Joe's and Blake and Lewis and Martin and Chris James. I mean, that's a good team. Solid team. That's very good team. team. Very interesting stats from last week with Ricky Ward, 781. Robert Hilton, 752. Both good. Bobby Taylor, 751. I like Bobby's act. Bobby's, Bobby's cool. Bobby likes to play the house way in. He's deeper than any lefty. He's swinging a third out right. He's got a soft speed going around the puddle, catching it dry, and letting it come back late break. Soft speed, hooking the ball from in. I like that shot. That's me. If I was going to bowl in here, I would do that. I would swing it around. Swing the front? Yep, swing the front. Nice. I know one thing, if I swung the front, uh, I wouldn't have any 379s. The 379 is, is when you're a little tighter in that puddle and you tug one, being it just stays left or 2810, like what Daniel Sarah's going through right yeah, now. Okay. He's too tight. And then he opened up the lane last week and went okay. around all of it. You gotta go around all of it. Yeah. First game, you couldn't miss the pocket, she's 180. It's a great league, I love it. It's the highlight of my night. I want to thank everybody for all of the compliments and the kind words 
uh, with our live streaming of this league. It's uh, changed the way I perceive myself in this bowling center. Be able to talk about bowling and these people trying their heart out and our sponsors and our hosts. And bowling in Southwest Florida for me is a thrill. And I mean it from the bottom of my heart. Every Wednesday is now special to me. And I just want to thank all of you for watching Tom and I and letting us uh, come into your living room for a few hours every week. It's truly an honor. Just beat me. I love it. <laughs> all right, so the hot seat this week is going to be uh, lane 27. It's going to be TAPS. Daniel Hyam, Mike Varda, Ricardo Rania, and Bobby Taylor. Good to watch the wow, great. Team. Got a chance to watch Danny and Bobby, two of our USBC reps. And lane 20 is going to be big bowling tournament. Wayne Toplin, Brendan Carlton, Doug Holton, like and Robert Wayne Hilton. Toplin's tough. Brandon Carlton. Brandon Carlton last time he both put three or four balls in a gutter. So yeah, I think he's I think he's on a diet. That's he looks skinnier. You know what happens? Good. You lose some weight, your hand shrinks, all of a sudden you lose the ball. Because obviously if your hand goes down here, it could be cold. You start losing the ball at the bottom of the swing, it's gonna go to the right. Sometimes you gotta tape it up and start with it a little tight where you know you're not gonna lose it, maybe take a piece out. Uh, I know myself I had a fluctuating hand. When I had to squeeze that thing and start missing everything left, you gotta have a good grip on the ball. And for all of you about grips, this coming Sunday, again, we're, we're going to let all of you know we have a great matchmaker plan with Storm Road of Grip Equipment. We're up to close to 40 people signing up. It's Sunday, or Saturday, or Sunday, excuse me. No, Saturday, right? Is it Saturday or Sunday? The, the uh, uh, 17th, I'm sorry. It's Saturday. What, is, what is the 17th? I lost it now. Oh, God, don't tell me I lost it. Sunday, the 17th. Squads, <laughs> I did lose it. I know I did. What's the day? I don't know. Oh my God, I'm, I, I, I'm having a brain lock on here. Can we erase this? That was so good. <laughs> I don't know if I want to keep going. I don't know what to do. Go around and tell Charlie, yeah, right on ask. November 17th, folks, look at your calendar. How's that? It's up to you. We have the Storm Roto Grip Matchmaker. Eight balls, $20. Throw them, you'll love them. Interchangeable grips. I'll be watching with Mark Pulaski, Ricky Ward, Chucky Rucker, Gary Seward, and I did lose it for a minute. Senior moment. Unbelievable. Come on in on the 17th. It costs $25. If you don't want to buy a ball, you don't have to. If you do, you get a $40 discount off of the ball you choose. Last week, a friend of mine in Rhode Island, David Bate at Lang's Bowlerama, had the Storm Matchmaker there, sold 18 Phase 3s, the ball coming out in December. You got one? People threw it and love it. Yes, we will have the ball here. Now? We will have the Phase 3. They're on their way or we'll oh, have them. Oh, we were promised we'd have them. So come on in November 17th. I just don't know if it's Saturday or Sunday, but I'll check my calendar as soon as the show's over. Okay. Now, lane 25 is going to be Team 11. Robert Sealy, Joe Smith, Craig Street, or Mike Smith. Mike Smith coming back. He is. I like that. Absolutely. And then on uh, late 26, we hockey baby. Anthony Evanchuk, Jim Shirt, Bob McIvan, and Chris Kubala. They've had a lot of airtime hockey baby on 25, 6, 7, They've been on our pairs about three or four times. Close enough flip to where all the yeah. people you don't see are going to be down. Uh, yeah, well, you know, that's good for them. They can have all their family and kids watch. And, uh, good team there. That team can bowl. Looking forward to it. So everything else there, Hoss? No, I'm just, again, honored to, to do all of this. Uh, again, it's a lot of fun for me. Um, you know, when I think of my career, I never thought I would be doing something like this the last few years, you know, with the internet, it started happening. So for me, Wednesday night's very important. I talk about my bowling, my stories. A lot of friends from around the United States are, are uh, coming in with comments, a lot of local people, all positive. We try to talk up the sport. You know, this is what we love to do, all of us in this bowling center. It's been our lives, Tom's ever since a young boy myself. So to have all of you as guests uh, is an honor for me. Speaking of honor, didn't your son win the NEBA yesterday? My son Michael, Michael won NEBA title 31. Michael's very unorthodox. A lot of people that haven't watched Michael Bowl <laughs> don't realize that Michael has won 130 scratch tournaments in 14 states since 1987. He has traveled, won the high roller in Las Vegas in uh, 88 for a two hundred thousand uh, dollars michael 10 times in his life 10 times has brought home a check for more than twenty thousand dollars in a bowling tournament oh, he is a down. natural winner he's a five-time eva bowler of the year he's in four hall of fames state of connecticut hartford county city of suffield connecticut and the new england bowling association hall of fame he's the most prolific champion in neva uh, alex aguiar is in second who in my opinion right now is probably the greatest bowler in new england 
But Michael has been a winner since he got out of high school in 86. He's a, just turned 51 years old in this past Sunday. Neba title 31. Uh, uh, he's my idol. I love him dearly. He's the most wonderful son. And uh, he's very well respected in the industry. He owns a pro shop at uh, the old Bradley Bowl in Windsor Locks. Been in the pro shop business 23 years. Michael was in 200 PBA tournaments with me from 72 to 86. We took him out of school in May. Every year we came back in September. And me and Michael and Ann traveled the United States in our RVs. And he watched the tour as a young man. He watched the greats. He watched Earl Anthony and Mark Roth and Dick Weber and Wayne Zahn and Dick Richter and Johnny Petragli and Larry Lobb and Carmen Salvino and Dave Sutar and Dave Davis and Jimmy Stefanich and Nelson Burton and Don Johnson and Mike Albee and Walter Ray and Pete Weber. Michael knows all of those bowlers. They love him. Every time he sees them, they hug him. They remember him as a little boy. Now he's 51. And his daughter, Caitlin, is in Greece. Her third year of college at uh, Roger Williams University right outside of Newport in an exchange uh, student program, spending three months in Greece, my granddaughter, Caitlin Lickstein. So uh, if she's watching on the internet, your daddy won, Caitlin, your daddy won. Me growing up in Connecticut, Michael's best bowler ever. But my great, my favorite memory of Mike was when him and Patrick Allen bowled a double for the PBA at LSD. Yes, they both bowled as amateurs. They made TV at Beaumont in 1992. And I sponsored both of them in the event. Uh, they won 10000 uh, At the end of the tournament, you know, they asked me what they wanted. I said dinner. Uh, I was doing very well as a businessman. We flew Patrick into Houston, picked up Patrick up. We bowled in Beaumont. Michael and Patrick made TV as amateur bowlers. Uh, and obviously, Patrick this year uh, on the USBC Hall of Fame ballot, uh, getting in the PBA Hall of Fame uh, this past January, a great, great, great bowler. Or last year in January, excuse me, 2018. And Patrick was in Michael's wedding along with Brian Bogosian. Brian Bogosian won the Masters in 99. So my son, and Patrick won the Masters. So. Two yeah. of my son's brides, uh, you know, uh, ushers in his wedding, both won the Masters. How's that for an unbelievable? I have a question everybody that wants to know is, how come Michael never bowled professionally? Michael's a homebody. And this is one of the questions he asked me when he was a young man. Dad, do you think I should turn pro? And I said to him, are you ready for the Red Roof or Motel 6 for six weeks in the West? And if you haven't cashed in five or six, and you go back to that room. Are you ready for that life? Now, you know you've already seen it. You've seen what happens out there. I said, are you ready to go out there and, and have a terrible summer, a terrible fall, and give up your home, give up your, your collection, give up your hobbies, give up mowing your lawn, giving up being in your living room, giving up your leagues, giving up your pro shop, giving up your life the way you've lived it. And you know what it takes, Michael. You've seen it. Can you do this? He said, I don't think I can do it, Dad. Wow. So I said, keep up your weekend bowling, be a weekend warrior, and what will happen is you'll love the game. If you bowl bad, you'll be home that night, you'll be in your bedroom, you'll have your living room with all your trophies and all your hobbies. And you know what? You start a few weeks later, you drive just 200 miles instead of 3,000. You're not stuck in a hotel with no food. I said, these, and when I had it happen to me, I did it about seven years. I got to be honest with you, at the age of 25, I was fried. I had to go to work. And I was a good bowler. I was in the top 50 in the world. But when you're not bowling good, the tour ain't the place to be. It is a tough life starting every week at zero. Plus, he was married and had two kids. You wake up, you know, for a month, you ain't got a paycheck. Who's paying the rent? You know, who's buying the groceries? You know, how, what do you tell your kids when you can't buy them a Christmas present? And uh, that's a tough life. Sounds tough. It is tough. And these guys that make it, the veterans that have made it, these kids that we're watching today on TV, the Simonson, my God, and Belmonte, and E.J. Tackett, they're gifted, they're fantastic. And we admire them, all of us in the bowling industry admire them. You know, we're a low-paying sport. Hopefully this AMF Bolero deal will change some things. I know they ponied up 400000 for the majors. Uh, we're praying for the Fox contract to grow, new sponsorships. And my goal before I leave this earth is to see a pro bowler make a million dollars in one year. It's never happened. And considering some of these athletes getting three, four million dollars that uh, hold the team back and bet 10 with a four million dollar contract, 
I often wonder how they Wookie can. Betts is on the verge of a thirty million dollar contract for ten years, three hundred million. Yeah, yeah. I want the Yankees to get Wookie <laughs> Betts and lead them off. It'd be awesome. I like Mookie. I like Mookie. I know I get I get box seats at the stadium if I uh, if Mookie becomes a Yankee, I will go after him to get at the I hate stadium. The Red Sox. I like Mookie Betts. Yeah, I don't like the Red Sox. I admire the Red Sox, and I'm yeah. thrilled that they won for their fans. I, I admire the ownership. I admire the loyal fans in New England. But I hate the Red Sox, and I want the Yankees yeah. to beat them every year. Yankee fan forever. I grit my teeth. I mean, Sorry for doing that. Yeah. You don't mind if I do that. I did it out. Being that I lost it and I didn't know the day that the demo day was on, at least I could talk about the Red Sox. The demo day is still the 17th? It's the 17th, yeah. but I don't know what day it is. It's either Saturday or Sunday, folks. Look at your calendar. Almost November will be okay. God, I lost it. Yeah. Terrible. Senior moment. Anything else for this Wednesday? Nothing other than I'm excited about it. You know, I want some good action. I want to see some good scores. Obviously, our pregame show starts at 20 to 7. I'll be going over the league to all our viewers. We will have some guests. There's going to be some people sitting with me this Wednesday again. So uh, tune in 20 to 7 for our live stream. There should be action uh, this Wednesday night with the Scott Cobb coming back and Stouffer and Ratchet and a few other boys. So let's see what happens. The cookie lady going to show with you? The cookie lady? Oh, uh, the cooking lady. Cookie. Cookie. Who's cookie? The cookies. Oh, the cookies. Oh, the cookie lady. Is she going to with us? Oh, you never know. She brings me cookies and chocolate. I might let her sit with me. She's kind of fun. It's pretty legit. Yeah, I love, oh. free, I love for free cookies. Rolling thunder. Rolling thunder. All right, that's all we got for this week. We'll see you in a couple days. See you in a few days, everybody. Join yeah. us. Thank 27 you. this coming Wednesday. We'll be there. All right.